So good morning, thanks all for coming. Um, I think you all know who I am, but if you don't, my name is Kristen Benson, um, and I'm here to talk about my senior project, which is on intergenerational relationships. So I'm gonna start out talking about why I chose this as my project. So I came in on the second day of school. I missed the first day of school because I was at a funeral for my grandfather. Um, he was a huge impact on my life. He was um, a role model, he was a leader, and he was a friend to me. So um, I struggled a little bit with that. Um, I was really emotional. I uh, had really, I, I wasn't ready to focus on school when I came in. And so I came in on the second day of school um, and everyone, in, it seemed like everyone in my senior sem class had an idea of what they wanted to do except me. So I started freaking out. I was really scared. I was like, I have no idea what I'm gonna do. This is terrible. And then Ms. Aubin, my senior sem teacher, told me, Kristen, relax a little bit, sit down, think, think about something you're passionate about, and then do your project on that. And so I was like, okay, I mean, I can try. I probably still won't come up with anything. Um, so I sat down and I sat next to one of my best friends, Michael Mullen, um, and he and I just started having a conversation. He asked me how I was doing. I told him I was okay, I was still a little emotional, it was really good to be my, with my family, that kind of thing. Um, and then we started talking about our grandparents. We talked about my pops, and we talked about his Mimi. And the funny thing about his Mimi is that every time I see his Mimi, our families, our friends, she gives me this huge hug and a kiss on the cheek. And she knows exactly who I am, and she does the same things to my uh, two sisters. Um, and after that conversation with Michael, I knew that I wanted to do my project on this, this, and this. That's my pops, my Nana Kate, and my two grandparents. Um, and I knew that I wanted to focus on intergener intergenerational relationships because my relationships with my grandparents are some of the most important things in my life. And so um, that whole thought process led me to my essential question, which is why is it important to create and maintain relationships between generations? And so this led to a lot of research before I actually came up to my senior product idea, so I'm gonna talk about that research. Um, so I started out with the question, why are inter inter intergenerational relationships important? And I came up with four things that I got from a lot of the sources, four of the most important things. The first was social lives. Um, having a relationship between two people who are of a different gen generation can greatly improve your social life. People who are my age, we grew up um, learning how to make friends through Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and all of, and Snapchat and all of our social media accounts. That's how we did it. We were raised. It's kind of like common knowledge. We just know it. People of an older generation, they weren't raised with that kind of thing. They learned how to make friends one-on-one. -on -one. They had to put themselves out there and learn how to do it. And so if you're making a relationship with somebody who's of an older generation, they don't know how to do that with Facebook and Twitter and all that stuff. So you're putting yourself out there and you're learning how to make relationships one-on-one -on -one and it can totally help your social life. It's, uh, it, I've experienced it with my grandparents, for sure. Um, the second part was lifestyle. Um, like I said earlier, um, we were raised totally different. Like People my age were raised totally different than people who were older than us. Like my grandparents, when, I, when they were my age, if I went up to her and said, my Nana, if I went up to her and I said, hey, let's go to the Apple store and buy an iPhone 7, I'm pretty sure she would think I was talking about a store that sold just apples. She would have no idea what I was talking about. Um, and so, for like an example, technology. Um, the lifestyle of an older person, is it's easy for them to get stuck in where they live. They don't know what to do. And if, you're, if, if I were an older person and I were friends with somebody who was younger, they could teach me and they could um, help me improve my lifestyle, learn how to use technology and that kind of thing. I've helped my grandparents multiple times learn how to use their iPad. Pretty sure I have to do it every single time. My Nana forgets all the time. Um, and the, the third thing <clears throat> is that there was benefits for both generations. Like I said earlier, it improves your social life, it improves your lifestyle. All of these things can help improve how you live your life, how you make friends, how you make further uh, relationships. And it's a huge part and you can make friends. Like cute little picture down there. <laughs> Um, the last thing, which I think is the most important, is happiness. Um, I read about a study that happened in Australia in, I think, 2012, and what happened was they collected data and they interviewed um, grandmothers and grandfathers to compare and contrast the relationship between grandmother and grandchild and grandfather and grandchild. And one of the most common things that each of them said, almost all of them said, is that after they spend time with their grandchild, they're happy. And the same thing goes for grandchildren and their grandparents. Grandchildren are happy after they spend time. A lot of you um, probably have experienced this. I've experienced it. Um, everyone's probably heard of it. Grandparents like to spoil their grandchildren. It's true. 
Every year, my grandfather, my pops, would take me out, take my two sisters out around our birthday, and he would take us shopping for anything we wanted. Didn't matter what the price was, didn't matter where you went, it was just anything you wanted. And that was awesome. They liked to spoil us. And I, I'm pretty sure there's never been one time that I left my grandparents' house where I wasn't smiling. And the same goes for my grandparents. And so after I researched why they're important, um, I went to the second part of my essential question, which is why, how do we maintain these intergenerational relationships? <clears throat> and the first part is that both sides of an intergenerational relationship need to demonstrate respect and responsibility towards each other. And that's huge, as it is for any uh, relationship, but especially for intergenerational relationships. An example would be my Nana Kate. Um, I had another example in, um, in my mind, but actually this happened yesterday, and it, and it totally, I couldn't help but think of my senior project. Yesterday, me and my family went up to Hanover, New Hampshire, where she lives, and we were helping her take down her Christmas decorations. And while I'm doing that, I'm taking down her crush, and I'm sitting, I'm facing the opposite way as her. She's sitting on the couch, and my dad starts to tell her about this movie we watched. Um, and it's on Netflix. And my Nana said, hey, I read that book. I want to watch it, but I don't know how to use Netflix. So my dad says, hey, Kaylin, my little sister, she's 12. Hey, Kaylin, why don't you go help Nana Kate teach her how to use Netflix for like the seventh time? And so Kaylin sat down on the couch, and it took maybe 15 minutes. And Kayla said, okay, well, this is how you choose a movie. This is how you play a movie. This is how you pause. This is how you rewind. All the basics of Netflix. And that, when I was sitting there and listening to this happen, showed respect and responsibility. My sister had the respect to sit there and the patience to sit there with my Nana and teach her how to use Netflix. And the responsibility of, as a grandchild, sitting there and teaching my grandmother. Another super important thing about an intergenerational relationship, which I think popped up in almost all of my sources, was student-teacher. And this is the idea that both generations in a relationship need to fill the position of the student and the teacher. There can be many different um, situations in which a younger generation would fill the position of the student or the teacher, for example, technology. Today there's a huge gap between our generations because of technology. Like I said earlier, we were raised with um, iPhones and iMacs and all the laptops and computers and stuff. My grandmother was not. She was raised with books. She was raised with going outside and playing, that kind of thing. And so what we would need to do is someone of our age needs to sit down and teach them how to use these things. Another example would be uh, people my age, we're learning how to go into college. We're doing this senior project. It's the first one that kind of pushes us off, doing this whole thing by ourselves. We're applying to colleges. We're accepting the colleges. We're making these huge decisions. We're becoming adults. That's what people our age are doing. My Nana sat down yesterday, and she started talking to me about becoming an adult what you need to do, how to apply yourself, that kind of thing. She's gone through all of this. She went through this process. She understands it. She has the knowledge. That, in that particular situation, she was the teacher and I was the student. Another important thing is effort. In order to maintain an intergenerational relationship, there needs to be a significant amount of effort put in by both sides. Like I mentioned earlier, again, there's a huge gap between the generations, the older generation and the younger generation. <clears throat> And if one side of this uh, intergenerational relationship isn't working to close that gap, it's not going to work. I have to work to close that gap. My, my little sister has to work to teach my, my grandmother how to use Netflix, and my grandmother has to work to sit down and learn about Netflix. Otherwise, it would never be figured out. She wouldn't know how to use Netflix. My little sister and my grandmother would never have that opportunity to sit down and learn from each other and that kind of thing. If we're not working, if, if both sides of the relationship are not working to close that gap, it's not going to be closed and the relationship isn't going to work. And so then after doing all this research, I figured I should probably tie it into a senior project. And I didn't quite know how to do this, and I realized that, um, you know, this whole project is about creating and maintaining these relationships, so I thought, why don't I actually help people create and maintain an intergenerational relationship? So what I did was I created a pen pal system. And this pen pal system, what would happen is um, I chose two seniors from Bow High School, Nandita Casaretti, who's right in front of the audience, and Ellen Warwick, and then two residents at White Rock Senior Living just down the road, Mary Nee and Phyllis Parker. And I paired them up, and they became pen pals. And what would happen is I would go to White Rock every Thursday, and I would sit for an hour and a half, and I would um, we'd have a discussion about creating and maintaining um, an intergenerational relationship, and then they'd write letters to each other. Um, and then I would come back here the next day and I would deliver those letters to the students and they would take time to read them and then reply and so forth and it went on for about a month and a half. During the senior project, I had to do community connection hours. My first community connection, I went to Bow Elementary School and I learned, and I job shadowed um, Mrs. Higgy, 
who's a first grade teacher. And the reason I went there was because I was going to be sitting down and I was going to be having discussions with people that I'd never met before. I needed to put myself out there and I needed to, I needed to learn how to teach them about this subject. And so I thought, well, what better way to do that than to go somewhere where there's a huge gap between the generation and they're teaching each other. So I went and I job shadowed Mrs. Hickey and I learned how she puts herself out there and I learned how she connects with her students and um, teaches them. My second part of my community connection was I went to White Rock Senior Living where I was doing my senior project and I job shadowed and did community service for Elizabeth Baisley, who's the community director. The reason I did this is because her job is so important there. She sits in an office every day and she works alongside all of these seniors. She schedules their events. She helps fix their problems that are going on in their apartment. And she, she works all the time with them. When I was there interviewing her, um, one of the seniors interrupted the interview and she said, excuse me, Kristen, I hope you don't mind. And I said, no, of course. And one of the seniors walked in, she just got back from the hospital, she was sick, and she was fine, and Elizabeth gave her a huge hug and asked her how, her how her kids were, how her grandchildren were, and it was just really nice to see the exchange between those two generations. So the outcome of my senior project. In my opinion, my senior project was extremely successful. I got to watch two seniors from Bow High School and two seniors at White Rock uh, Senior Living learn how to make a relationship with each other. They'd never met each other before. And mind you, all of this was not in person. It was over letters. So they didn't know what each other looks like. They uh, didn't know what each other, how they acted, that kind of thing. It was all over letters. And I got to watch them become friends and learn how to, to be, to have an intergener intergenerational relationship. And at the end, near the end, uh, went through all the way through November, near the end, Every single one of them approached me and said, when am I going to get to meet my pen pal in person? And I said, well, since all of you have mentioned this to me multiple times, I figure I should probably put a lunch together. So I did. We sat um, and we ate pizza. We exchanged thank you gifts and we got to know each other even better. And we sat there. I thought it was maybe going to be an hour and a half. We sat there for three and a half hours talking. It was awesome. And we weren't bored at all, right, Nandina? <laughs> Um, and I think my favorite part of the outcome of my senior project is that not only did I get to sit there and watch these people make relationships, but I got to make my own relationships. I didn't even think about that when I started the project. I sat there and I got to know these people so well. I never met the seniors before, and when I went into uh, my senior year of high school, I was friends with Nandita, I was friends with Ellen, but after this project, I was good friends with Nandita, and I was good friends with Ellen. I got to know them so well, and they got to talk to me, I had to spend a lot of time with them. Um, and it was awesome. It was so fun. And in my opinion, it was extremely successful for my pen pals and for me. And on the topic of my senior project, um, it's about creating relationships, which definitely happened, but they've also been maintained. Just a second ago, I was talking to Nandita. She said, oh my gosh, I forgot to text Mary Happy New Year. And I said, well, text it in the group chat. We'll all say Happy New Year together. That's right, we have a group chat. <laughs> it's true. And um, just uh, at the beginning of December, Legally Blonde was put on here, um, where all three of the people in high school, me, Ellen, and Dita, were in the show. And at the last show, I think, we looked down, and right in that seat there was one of the pen pals. The other one couldn't get out. But she was right there, she was smiling, and she was cheering us on the whole time. That's how you maintain a relationship. I don't know if Mary likes shows, I don't know if she likes theater, but she put herself out there, and she came here, and she sat down and cheered us on. That's how you maintain a relationship, and it made me so happy to see that happening. Um, so a few thank yous before you all go. Uh, first, Miss Aubin, my senior STEM teacher. She was extremely helpful. Obviously, I wouldn't have been able to get here without her. Uh, Mrs. Barnia, she was my mentor. She helped me figure out scheduling and what I was going to do, and it, she was also extremely helpful. Um, and then my two community connections, Elizabeth Bailey and Martha Hickey, and then, of course, my pen pals, Nandita, Ellen, Mary, and Phyllis. And then before you leave, one last note, I just want to end with a quote. And the quote is, there's a tension in the poll. Young believe that the older generation is gobbling up the resources. We need to make sure that the older people are the resource. Aging is wisdom. Leslie Stahl. Thank you. Any questions? No? Thanks. <laughs>